G'day, I'm Gavin, and thanks for your interest in a Hurley's fly fishing adventure to Christmas Island. It's an incredible place, there's about six, 7,000 people live here, and you've got sand flats as far as the eye can see. So if you want to target bonefish, this is certainly the place to come. They'll range in size from a pound, which is still pretty good fun, up to you can get them, you know, seven, eight, even to around 10 pound as well. But they're just incredible fish to target. There's also a lot of triggers that you're going to come across here on the lagoon itself, as well as GTs and a few other different species, but you're really here for the bonefish, they're just incredible. We've also got outside fishing, and that's something that you really should consider. You've got relatively calm water and you've got schools of tuna, various sort of uh, species there, as well as going outside, we can look to get some sailfish, you've got wahoo, you know, even a few marlin get caught from time to time. So whatever you're fishing, it doesn't always have to be fly, you might even be into lure fishing poppers or out into the big game stuff. Akari House, it's got it all for you. So from the northern hemisphere, you enter via Honolulu, and for the southerners, it's via Fiji. And it's an incredible place to spend a bit of time. You have to put up with some sun, crystal clear water, and sandy beaches, but you're gonna love it. Now the gear we're gonna use on Christmas Island is pretty important. For bonefish, we tend to use an eight weight. I use a stalker current. I find that's much better for casting into the wind and for steering around some of these bigger fish. The reel's quite important. I use a galvan, has it sealed drag, much better in this saltwater environment. Lines also play an important role here too because the water's so warm, so we need a tropical line. I've got a Rio in their Flats Pro. It's ideal for this sort of stealth work and it really presents that fly right up to where the fish are and nice and subtly as well. So get the right gear to, to uh, target some of these fish here with a decent set of glasses. I use the Tonic. They're great Polaroids for, for spotting these bonefish because at times they can be really difficult to see. So get the right gear and you're going to have a lot of fun. Now that's a, a typical sort of fly box that you're going to need to bring to Christmas Island. Um, the bonefish are tending to going to eat like a lot of little crabs or the little uh, like a shrimp type thing. There's a mantis shrimp. Obviously, I start off small. Um, little rubber legs look like arms and legs sort of going everywhere, and very sparsely dressed tends to work as well. At times, the, the colours are, will, will alter from orange to more silver or more chrome and things like that. But you want an assortment. Uh, particularly for these bones because they might change on different days. And there's also trigger fish, which is another style, and they tend to eat just more crabs. So there's a few different variations that we can use for trigger fish, which are a highly prized fish to get in Christmas Island as well. So uh, get as many flies as you're gonna need, and hopefully you put them in front of the fish and they're gonna work. Now I'll just show you what you can achieve on your week in Christmas Island. It's not all about the bonefish, there's plenty of other things to do as well. With Christmas Island's vast array of, of sand flats, we, we get around usually on boats of various sizes. Now, there's a couple of ways to find bonefish on the flats of Christmas Island. One is just to really slowly walk um, very quietly and you will see the bonefish generally feeding up current. The other way is to get to a nice little area which will essentially have a nice little channel or something run through it and the fish will treat that as a highway. But trust your guides because they know where the fish are going to be on that particular tide. You'll notice a bit of sign language you've got to learn before you come here. Big strip, short strip, get it in and worry about another fish. Yep. Uh, once they realise that they're not in control, and they just go back in that other direction. In Christmas Island, they do uh, uh, their week-long trips because there's only, at this stage, just one flight in and out per week. So they will fly from Fiji, drop us off here, and that plane continues on to Honolulu. Yeah, nearly. Now he's here. Nice one, eh? Yeah. Beauty. Beauty. That's wow. a fun one, That is, eh? You, you will struggle to see, but through the back there, that is just massive, isn't it? That's a, wow. that's a, that's a thumper. That's a thumper. <laughs> uh, straight up. Okay. Yeah. It's on it. Come on. There. Excellent. Good. That was pretty good, mate. They're working their way up from that deep water up into these flats as the tide comes in. And that crab had a, had a hook in it. Perfect. In the 
power is just incredible that you will find as you're winding these fish in. I mean, you get a, a decent rod. That's why I use an eight weight to stalk a current. It's got plenty of go in it, so you can steer them around. And uh, we'll just work him way back in as you love that clunk clunk as that uh, fly line comes back onto the reel. It makes you feel a little bit more uh, relaxed than having everything way out. Almost heading back out to sea. Many fish is a good fish, but once you start getting them, you know, above, I guess, three pounds, it's going to be a bone fish that, I mean, there you go, you're into the backing again, and that's a pretty solid sort of a drag we've got on there as well. So it'll take a sizable fish to, to do that, and it just makes it great fun, you know, to be out here. I, I just I just love the place. We do a lot of trips to Christmas Island because it is the best in the world for this style of fishing, and you're not limited to this either. I mean, like I have a ball catch and bone fish because it's all sight fishing, but, but if you go out, you know, the ocean just there, you've got tuna, you've got sailfish, wahoo, you've got the whole sort of shooting match. And inside here we've got GTs, triggers, um, it's just literally endless and it's like uh, on the doorstep of Ikari House. So uh, if you get a chance and you're a fly fisherman, get across here and do it. Spend a week here, it'll be something you're never going to regret. There you go, into that backing again. And I shouldn't really grizzle because I've got no appointments today, so I really don't have to be anywhere. So, uh, yeah, if it takes a little bit of extra time, that's okay too. And they certainly do get them bigger than this, but this is still great fun in itself to get a, a lovely bone just so thick across the back. That's a, a good solid fish, and that's probably three and a half to four pounds. And uh, just incredible power from his tail and through his back section there. When these fish are front on, you can certainly see them. Like that's green, they turn side on, they chrome like that and they just blend in there. That's why they're, they call them the ghost of the flats and they're an incredible fish to target. And uh, that's just a great specimen there, just full of power. And that mouth, you can just see that he tilt up, jump on any crabs and, and things like that and, and certainly crush those, so a powerful fish. So that's a beauty. Have you got it? Yep. Right, there we go. So we've got one, we've had the teasers going there and we've had a couple of fish come up to them. So you've got to just rip those teasers back out and then that fly's got to get down there. This one, you've still got plenty of go. That is amazing. That's a belter. Absolute belter. All good. Okay. Yes, he's got it, and he's got it, and he's got it! Oh, yeah! Yeah! Oh, <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. 20, we'll go 20. You always exaggerate, Simon. Especially, round yeah. yeah, round it up, never down. Anyway, we'll put him back. Thanks, mate. A ripper, absolute ripper. Very good. Thanks, mate. That's him. Yeah. Yep. Doesn't know he's hooked yet. If Simon. Right, now he's. Oh, gee. Power. You gotta love these trigger fish. Just incredible. Yep. They've either got to be strong or fast. And some of them are both. Yeah, they're, they're, they're targeted because they, you have, they're so cautious. And everything's got to be done properly to be able to get them to take, you know. Well done, lovely trigger. Good job. Good job. Mustachio, yeah. mustachio. We've got the little moustache there. Very good. He's a, a thumper. Right up. Right, come on. Come on, one is. Yeah! That's 
it. Oh, no. There we go. And that's uh, that's tuna fishing. And then we get it on to there. And, and it's amazing how quickly the backing comes out. And he's only a little one too. But they're just powerful fish. I mean, it's just incredible power. The only thing he hasn't got written is TW Sharon on the, uh, the side of that. And he's pumped up to full pressure. Just anyway, just rip it out there. Yep. Let it sink. Yeah, yes. good. There we go. Oh, my mate. <laughs> this is milk fishing. This is not bad, eh? No, this is very bad. good. Yeah. Very good. They're, they're up feeding on the surface, and that's what gets a lot of like fly fishermen excited. You know, their backs out of the water. Yeah, oh, better one. Focus on that, but just essentially would look like a little bit of uh, weed or scum, and that's what does the trick. Yeah, so. Nice little uh, Christmas Island milk fish, he's probably about 15, 17 pounder. You had to, there's a little bit of guessing involved. Oh. Quite a few casts of these fish and we thought maybe the fly wasn't right but yep. this bonefish thought it was right and so that was good and it's just great fun i mean it's uh a word i use a lot is challenging and that's what it sometimes can be sometimes you can walk up and just throw the cast the fish eats it you know everybody's happy but at other times you've got to vary your retrieve you know and it also might be a different fly even to go down tippet size the same as what you would in trout fishing you've got to do that at times on these bonefish and the rewards are there when you get it all right. Get a little bit closer and you'll realise we're human and off again. And they might have two or three runs and then they're, uh, then they're a little bit buggered, but uh, just plenty of power, particularly great fun on this shallow water because they've just got to go distance rather than just down. So a great fighting fish. And it's just something you've got to do at least once in your life to come bone fishing. And I think Christmas Island's the best place in the world to do that. And you've just got everything on offer. I mean, Akari House is by far the best uh, resort to be staying at. I've got all the facilities there that we've become accustomed to. And good boats too, which is uh, quite a, a benefit of having a fast boat to get you to the places you need to go. Not massive, but just stunning fish, just with that tail, all that power, and these are just so full of muscle. Not like a, a sloppy little lake fish that doesn't have to work hard, these are fit fish.
the week is at Icari House, which is the best on the island. It's situated in London, which is right where the boats are stored, so it's very fast to get on the boat and to get on, onto the water, which is where we want to be. It's an ideal setting uh, to have a look at that every morning once you wake up. The meals are fantastic, the guides are terrific, and the rooms are very clean and very cool at night, which is very important. We also have a bar, so if you get thirsty at any time, there's always somewhere to get a drink. So I carry it's pretty well organised where you know exactly who you're fishing with, who your guides are, what time you're leaving, what boat, and what you're going to target, whether it be GTs, milk fish, bone fish, or even outside. So you know exactly where you're going, who you're with the night before. Well, that's just some of the things you can achieve on one of your Christmas Island adventures. It's an amazing experience that you just have to do. Thank you.